Hey guys, welcome back to the next segment of the Cisco Firewall Teach to Fish session. So this is the uh, initial engineering architecture and implementation uh, segment where we're covering everything you need to do from the ground up to get familiar with Cisco, the product, and how to go about making decisions and then implementing it in a fairly practical way. So this is the implementation consideration segment of the video, and we're gonna be covering timing, staging, the switchover and re-image, migration tools, and support infrastructure. Now these slides aren't gonna be super fancy, um, got a lot to cover, uh, and I'll be adding more content later for you guys. <clears throat> so the first one is timing, and if you have any type of project management background, this is really important and can be crucial in delivering your projects on time, and making you look like a rock star. So I kind of broke it up into like practical timing uh, of your your life cycle or delivery. So you've got your internal engineering where you're like doing the planning phase, you design it out, you put it together in some PowerPoint or with some SOPs or site security plans or whatever. It then goes to some boards or whatever you have for your internal control gates for review. They finally decide to approve it. And each one of these segments can take some time. It might take you like a week of doing a proof of concept or testing in the lab. And then you throw it in a PowerPoint, it takes another week. And then you finish doing all your documentation that you're required to do, like your site security plans, uh, your SOPs, yada, yada. And then once that's all bundled up, like a month down the road, it goes to review. And those control gates happen like once a week or once a month. So that adds another leg or, or block that you have to consider uh, slippage on. And meanwhile, all of this, you have to worry about you taking leave or somebody else involved taking leave. So once it's reviewed, then you finally get the approval. You go ahead and start trying to order. And that in includes that whole ordering or procurement cycle that I went over before where you come up with a bomb, we send you an estimate, and then you turn around and place the sales order. And then we have to think about shipping time. So you've placed the order, well, it might take, you know, six months to get the device because of chip shortages, <coughs> 2021. So it shows up at your data center or whatever receiving building you have, and that may not be the ultimate destination. So you have to be cognizant of time it takes from hitting your receiving facility to getting to the data center or the closet that you need to actually do the install, or even if it's in your own hands. Next thing you do is you do whatever you wanna do with it at first, either initial configuration or whatever, and then you deliver it to the staging area. You put it in place where it's going to be installed or at your desk, wherever you choose to do this, and go through the final configuration. Once you've had the configuration done, you turn it on, and then you need to verify that it is functioning properly. Now, we said this is the initial design architecture and implementation, and part of that uh, can be something that's not intuitive, and that's where you're recapping an old design. So it may not be net new, but it's new in terms of you have to come up with a full fresh design. So it may include some sort of crossover, re-image, or transfer of an existing data path in your network. So <clears throat> it may be who you to perform some sort of staging. And that's where this becomes important. If it's net new, you just sit at your desk and do everything. But if you're going in for a re-image or recap of something that already exists, then you typically want to pre-place your physical boxes. So you find out it's in data center, rack one, you know, RU3, um, and your box needs to go in RU4 because you're going to put it side by side because you, in your infinite wisdom, you're going to do a live switchover where you pre-place everything, you pre-configure it, and then all you do is yank some cables and plug it back in. And then hopefully it works. And that way you minimize your uh, maintenance window downtime. So you wanna place the physical boxes, you wanna get cables run, hook up the out-of-band management that will allow you to manage it from your desk or your laptop, possibly even in FMC if you're using central management. Uh, and then you do your initial test and configuration while it's still out of band. You put all your policies, do any type of migration tools you need to. You cable it up uh, and then you pull the plugs and switch it over. Now, you can pre-play software if you have an FMC, for example, you can put all the upgrades uh, say you know it's shipped with 6.1, but you want 7.0, so you've got the upgrade package for 6.1 on the FMC already pre-placed. Once you manage it, then you can initiate the upgrade uh, before the configs get pushed or whatever. Or you can pre-place it onto whatever repository you're using for typically what is FTP, or nowadays becoming more common is SFTP, so you have a secure transfer mechanism. So that's staging kind of in a nutshell. Last thing you have is the live switchover. So if you did the pre-placement and the management connections and configuration, you already know it's being managed properly. DNS, NTP, everything's working. Uh, so then all you have to do is literally go pull the cables and plug it in. Well, now you need to make sure it's actually working. 
Um, and so that's when you perform your tests to make sure the traffic's still going from network A to network B, ACLs are working properly, natting's working properly, VPNs are working properly, anything else you've placed, uh, any type of service you've placed on that box. Now, <coughs> there's also another option, and that could be you're just doing a full re-image of the box. Instead of a traditional upgrade, which falls more into the O&M cycle, you might be doing a re-image to go to a net new code base that's never been on the network before, and that is a thing. So you might want to do a backup or export of the existing config, re-image fresh, and then re-import the config. Now it's made simpler if you're using an FMC, um, but you can do it other ways. So let's talk about migration tools because your net new design might be something like recapping old ASAs with new Firepower code devices. So there's a Firepower migration tool and it kind of exists in two different modes or models now. One is a standalone tool which you can use to migrate configs into your FMC, your central manager, for a standalone ASA. Uh, and the other one is if you are connected to the internet and can use the cloud services, it's built right into CDO. So you can take an ASA that CDO is managing, yank the configs, and push them into a firepower configuration for a device that's to replace the existing one. Uh, there's also other things to, to think about, like if you're using Snort 2 and you want to switch to Snort 3, there's Snort rule conversions. <coughs> Many of those are manual. In some cases, Cisco offers Snort rule conversion services. And then you have to think about other things, like if you're using like Bro rules or Suricata rules, you can convert those to Snort rules for the majority, like 99.9%. .9%. Now, there's some minor tools out there. I actually published one that's kind of janky, but it works. Um, so yeah, just things to think about, migrations tools to make your life easier during this. And I will demonstrate the Firepower migration tool in my live demo later. Last thing is all the supporting infrastructure, everything from physical to logical. So from the physical standpoint, you go to hook these up, many data centers have 110 or 220 power. They might have a certain uh, types of plugs, uh, connections on them. You wanna make sure you have those. You wanna have the right cable length runs and the right cables to hook all of these up. Uh, if you're doing net new install versus just a transfer. Um, and you want to make sure you have everything at the right locations, maybe even a laptop. I don't know if you have a full out-of-band network or not. Last thing is the logical supporting infrastructure. You absolutely must have DNS and NTP. Now, FTP and SFTP are nice, and out-of-band management connections are nice because that means you don't have to run into the data center every time something happens. Oh, so that's about it for the implementation considerations. I believe the next one is the live demo, and that's where I'm going to show you how to install things from the ground up, uh, configuring sale policies, installing FMC, installing FTD, managing it, everything from the ground up. All right, I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.